Hello, welcome to Literary Life and welcome to this video where I wanted to talk a little bit about the International Booker Prize, the long list this year for 2024, as well as how my reading is going to very much be influenced by this prize this year and the selections. So if you're familiar with my channel, I have mentioned um, previously that one of my goals moving forward is definitely to expose myself to more international authors, especially works that have been translated. Uh, I definitely want to heighten my awareness by familiarity with different parts of the world, uh, as different cultures, as well as different styles of literature, different styles of storytelling different styles of crafting a story. I love nothing more than um, getting exposed to things that feel so unfamiliar, so uncomfortable, so foreign, and really introducing myself um, to these new ways of living. That's one of the very core reasons why I love to read so much. So I knew when the International Booker Prize in particular was going to uh, go live this year that I needed to focus, pay attention, and take the time to read some of these authors. Now, from the long list, I believe there are 14 that I will go through here in a moment. Uh, I did already order a few, and I'll let you know which ones those are, but I am going to wait for the short list to be announced on April 9th, and I will then read all of the short list. So I'm hoping the few I picked are already on that to get me ahead, but if not, I do. Um, my goal is to read the, the whole short list, and then I will keep the long list authors um, on my radar, uh, just you know, knowing that they have been recognized and that I need to make sure I get to them at some point in the future. Uh, one of the interesting things this year about the International Booker Prize selections is that Latin America was very present in the authors. And uh, I guess historically, like Ireland, for example, had been well represented. And this is one year that we really saw an upsurge of the Latin American fiction um, being recognized. So I thought that was very cool. The other thing is there are a number of different languages. So as I go through each book, I'm going to share with you the country of origin, the language it was translated from. I am really excited about that. And then another thing that they mention is that there are there is a wide range of forms of fiction. So we are going to see some love stories. We're going to see some magical realism. We're going to have books that were written by poets. Uh, so I was really intrigued, short stories as well. I was really intrigued by the variety that this year's list brought up. Now, one of the things to know about these selections is that they are submitted by the publishers themselves. So, you know, when we think about the sample that these pieces of work were pulled from, I just want to call that out, that the publications, the publishers had to submit the work. Um, so I want just to caveat that if, you know, when we think about getting exposed to some of the greatest writers, this is definitely one good route to get there. But in my own mind, I'm also recognizing that this is funneled through um, publisher selections, publishers uh, energy and getting their authors submitted. Uh, and I don't know how representative it is, but it's definitely, I think, one solid way to begin the journey of getting exposed more globally to fiction. All right. That is enough about my excitement about this whole situation in the long list. Let's start talking about the books. So the first long list selection is Not a River. Now, I'm going to attempt to pronounce the author's name, but if you're new to my channel, know that I have something completely broken between my brain and my mouth, and I mispronounce words constantly in English, much less in foreign languages. So my goal throughout the course of this year is to also, as I become more familiar with these authors, learn how to pronounce their names correctly. Please forgive if I do not do so at this point in time. But Not a River is written by Selva Almeida. She is um, from Argentina. So this book was translated from Spanish. Now we're going to have a group of fishermen here who or a group of men who go out fishing on a favorite part of the river. And apparently something occurred um, there, a terrible accident several years prior. And despite this, and they have memories of this event, so they must have been present at the time of this terrible accident. 
uh, they have returned because it is their favorite spot and they want to be joyous in the moment. They are drinking, they're cooking, they're talking, they're dancing. And essentially with the goal of getting beyond what had happened here previously. Um, but they are outsiders. And it's interesting because it notes that they're inhabitants of not just like the human world, but the watery universe, both human and otherwise. And I'm not quite sure what that means, but I do find that very intriguing. And it's going to note the description that is the forest presses closer, that violence seems inevitable and can tragedy be avoided. I have not yet ordered this one, but this one is definitely, definitely um, piqued my interest and is on my radar and I would want to read. Now, the second selection is a book. Um, the author is from Venezuela. So this book was also translated from Spanish and it's called Sympagia. Uh, Rodrigo Blanco Calderon. Now, I have ordered this book, so it is on its way to me. This book is set in Venezuela, and um, um, there's going to be a mass exodus of the intellectual class who have been leaving their pets behind. Uh, so the protagonist are, is a movie buff, and he receives a text message from his wife saying that she is leaving the country and him, He's not heartbroken by this, but he's actually liberated by his wife's departure. Two other events, though, are going to end up disrupting his life in addition to his life's departure. He's going to discover that he's been entrusted with a mission to transform this town, um, which is his great family home, into a shelter for abandoned dogs. And if he manages to do it in time, he's going to inherit this luxurious apartment that he shared with his wife. So I'm a huge fan of dogs. My dogs are pretty much always in the office with me. And I was so intrigued by everything as well as I'm not, I'm not certain that I recall having read a Venezuelan author previously. So this one definitely went on my let me grab this now list. So the third book is Kairos or Kairos by Jenny Erpenbeck. This is uh, translated from German. Uh, she is from Germany. So this book is going to take us to 1986 in Berlin. And we're going to have two people that meet by chance on a bus. She is a young student. He is older and married. Theirs is going to be an intense and sudden attraction. They both have a strong passion for music and for art. And their passion and the, is really going to be heightened by the secrecy of the affair. As you know, commonly that is a dynamic that happens. And But she is then going to stray for one night. She is going to, um, it sounds like, cheat on him. And he cannot forgive her this. And this dangerous crack is going to form between them where essentially it's going to open up, begin a dynamic between them of cruelty, of punishment, and the exertion of power. And the world around them on top of this, their relationship, their dynamic changing, the world around them is changing. The GDR is beginning to crumble. The old certainties, the old loyalties are beginning to crumble. And we essentially are entering a new era um, who's the gains of that time also um, come with a tremendous amount of loss. So I do think this book as well is incredibly intriguing. And so I did not get this one yet, but it is also one that I'm adding to my want to read list and will hopefully get to. I would love to get to it this year, but you guys have also seen my book hauls. <laughs> we'll see. All right. The next book is The Details by Ia Jemberg. Uh, she's Swedish, um, so this is from uh, Sweden. So the book, The Details, is going to follow an unnamed narrator, and she is in a period of illness where she is reflecting on her life, and those reflections are really going to take us around four core relationships with um, four different women, and through her reflections, we're going to essentially um, access her memories, her experiences, and explore, like, what does it mean to be human? What does it mean to love? This is another one that I was really intrigued by, but I have not yet ordered, so it's also on my radar. Um, the next book is a Polish author called Ursula Honig. 
Uh, it's called White Nights. Um, she is from, it was translated from Polish. This is one I wanted to order and I could not get access to yet in the U.S. So I'm hoping now that it's been long listed, I can get a copy. Um, but we have a series of 13 interconnected stories. So this is a collection of stories concerning the various tragedies and misfortunes that befall a group of people who all grew up and lived in the same uh, village in southern Poland. Now, I am Polish-American. My um, I think I'm 80, 89 percent Polish, my ancestry, and um, I have not been to Poland, but I would love this was one of the books where I'm like, I, I need to read this. I am so intrigued by um, that that part of my history that I am very, very unfamiliar with. So I am definitely going to pick up this book as soon as I can. Um, each story centers itself around a different character and how it is that they manage to cope, survive, or merely exist, despite and often in ignorance of the poverty, disappointment, tragedy, despair, brutality, and general sense of futility that surrounds them. So this one, um, definitely, uh, all of them I want to read, but this one is a for sure. Now, this next book I did get, Mater 210 by Yang Sok Yong. Um, he is Korean, so this book was translated from Korean. This is another book that I have ordered. It's centered on three generations of a family. You guys know I love my multi-generational family stories, but these are, this family is our rail workers and laid off factory workers staging a high altitude sit-in. This book is going to depict the lives of ordinary working Koreans starting from the Japanese colonial era, continuing through liberation and right up to the 21st century. So there were three things that grabbed me. I'm like multi-generational family, love it. We have a culture that I have very little exposure to as well as their jobs, their socioeconomic status. And then the history that I really have very little to no knowledge about. What a great way for me to get myself introduced to um, these different points of Korean history. So this book is on its way to me. So I will share with you um, that as soon as I get it right here before April 9th. Um, the next book, A Dictator Calls by Ismail Kadaire. Now he is Albanian. So this book was translated uh, from Albanian. Now, this is the one author who previously, this is his second time, if he wins, he's already won an international Booker Prize. This would be, he'd be the first off author to win a second time. Um, this particular book, I almost ordered all of them. I want to read, but I did not yet. This book is set in June 1934. Joseph Stalin allegedly telephoned the famous novelist and poet Boris Pasternak to discuss the arrest of a fellow Soviet poet, um, poet. In a fascinating combination of dreams and dossier facts, Ismail Kadare, winner of the International Booker Prize, like I noted, he's going to reconstruct a three-minute phone call where they spoke and then all of the aftershocks of this mysterious moment in modern history. He's going to, to do this. He's going to weave together accounts of witnesses, reporters, and writers. Um, and he's going to tell a gripping story of power and political structure of the relationship between writers and tyranny. Um, so another very intriguing story. The next book, The Silver Bone by Andrew Kirchhoff, translated from Russian, the author's from Russia. Uh, so this is the magical realism book, and it is set in 1919 in Kyiv. Probably mispronounced that. Um, the Soviets control the city at this point, but white armies menace them from the West. No man trusts his neighbor, and any spark of resistance may ignite into open rebellion. Our main character's father is murdered, and his last act, his father's last act, is to save his son um, and deprived of his right ear, his son, our main character, instead of his head, he is now left an orphan with only his father's collection of abacuses for company. Until that is, his flat is requisitioned by two Red Army soldiers whose secret plans he is somehow able to 
overhear with uncanny clarity. He's eager to thwart them. And there, he, then he's going to stumble into a world of murder and intrigue that will either be the making of him or finish what was started, um, essentially leading to his death. So another very intriguing book. The next one is What I'd Rather Not Think About by Gente Postuma. Um, I probably mispronounced that, but he's from the Netherlands, so this was translated from Dutch. I ordered this book. This is another one I'm like, okay, I definitely, definitely need to read this one like soon. So what if one half of a pair of twins no longer wants to live? What if the other one can't live without them? The question lies at the heart of this deceptively simple story. The narrator is a twin whose brother has recently taken his own life. She looks back on their childhood and tells of their adult lives, how her brother tried to find happiness but lost himself in various men and the Boagin or Boagin movement um, that I definitely will learn about as well as how to pronounce, um, but he never lost himself completely. So this is one I was just incredibly intrigued by. Um, I'm a huge fan of books from the Netherlands. So it, that one I've read a handful, but it seems like the majority that I've read um, tend to be more thrill in the thriller genre. So I'm definitely looking forward to this. The next bo book, Lost on Me by Veronica Ramo, is um, translated from Italian. The author's from Italy. This one I have ordered as well. Um, Vero, our main character, has grown up in Rome with her eccentric family and omnipresent, I can't pronounce that right now, mother, I can hear it right in my head, it just doesn't come out right, um, who is devoted to her own anxiety, a father ruled by hygienic and architectural obsessions, and a precocious genius brother at the center of their attention. As she becomes an adult, Vero's need to strike out on her own leads her into a bizarre and comical situations. As she continues to plot escapades and her mother's relentless tracking methods and guilt-tripping mastery thwart her at every turn, it is no wonder that the Vero become that Vero, not the Vero, <laughs> the Vero becomes a writer. I just gave her like her own title. She becomes a writer and a liar inventing stories in a bid for her own sanity. I mean, family dynamics. I just love all of the components described there. All right, The House on Via uh, Gamito, Domenico Starnone, another Italian book, um, author from Italy. Another one I want to read, The Modest Apartment. Um, in Via Gamito, or Gemito, <laughs> Smells of paint and white spirit. The living room furniture pushed up against the wall to create a makeshift studio and drying canvases must be moved off the beds each night. Federi, the father, a railway clerk, is convinced of possessing great artistic talent. If he didn't have a family to feed, he'd be a world famous painter. Ambitious and frustrated, genuinely talented, but full of arrogance and resentment, his life is marked by bitter disappointment. His long-suffering wife and their four sons bear the brunt. It's his firstborn who years later will sift the lies from the truth to tell the story of a man he spent his whole life trying not to resemble. Again, like the family dynamics, the conflict between one's passion and a, a desire, the identity, and what one's life unfolds. Uh, I just so intrigued. Don't have this one yet, but want to. Another one that I thought was really interesting, Crooked Plow by Itamar Vieira Jr. Um, this was translated from Portuguese. The author's from Brazil. We're going to be deep in Brazil's neglected Bahia hinterland. May have mispronounced that. Two sisters find an ancient knife beneath their grandmother's bed and momentarily, mystified by its power, decide to taste its metal. The shuddering violence that follows marks their lives, and binds them together forever. So, so intrigued, so intrigued. Okay, the final book, Undiscovered, by Gabriela Weiner, um, translated from Spanish, the author's from Peru. Alone in an ethnographic museum in Paris, Gabriela is confronted with her unusual inheritance. She's visiting an exhibition of pre-Columbian artifacts. The spoils of a plunder from European uh, colonial 
times, many of them from her home country of Peru. Peering through the glass, she sees sculptures of indigenous faces that resemble her own, but the man responsible for pillaging them was her own great-great-grandfather, Austrian colonial explorer Charles. In the wake of her father's death, Gabriella begins delving into all she has inherited from her paternal line, from the brutal trail of racism and theft that her great-great-grandfather was responsible for, to revelations of her father's infidelity, she traces a legacy of abandonment, jealousy, and colonial violence and questions its impact on her own struggles with desire, love, and race in a polyamorous relationship. So I think it's interesting that, um, anyway, the exploration into her own family history here uh, is definitely very intriguing to me. So this is one I am also, I'm, I think I've, I'm, I'm interested in reading every all of these books. So anyway, that is an amazing long list, in my opinion. Would love to hear your thoughts below. And if you've read any of the books or plan to share that, come April 9th, I will um, attend to the short list that gets announced, and I will definitely read all of those. If you plan to do a similar journey, let me know. But other than that, thank you, as always, for being a part of my literary life. Now, let's go read some more books. Happy reading.